Economic Blues as Nigeria celebrates our 63rd Independence Day anniversary. And fuel I calls for energy transition to fossil fuel alternatives. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. Nigeria marked our 63rd anniversary as a sovereign nation since gaining independence from the United Kingdom. However, there has been a mixed trail of reactions from its citizens, with many citing the economic hardship and poor governance, even as the nation celebrates 63 years of independence. To alleviate the plight of many Nigerians, with needs such as a thriving and stable economy, quality infrastructure, good education, and a security system that works, Nigeria requires good leadership. And how can Nigeria's leadership recruitment process be strengthened? Is the primacy to good governance even as Nigeria turns 63? Joining me to discuss this is Kola Aregbe, public analyst, project management consultant, and a veteran leadership and management mentorship expert. Kola is both based in the United Kingdom, where I got to know him some, some years back, as a celebrated uh, leadership mentorship uh, awardee. And indeed, if he frequents coming home regularly these days, I wouldn't know what he's up to. But Kola, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you very much, Kola. Thank you. It's been a bit of, uh, for most Nigerians, it's been a bit of a very tough season, especially in the backdrop of some of the recent policies by the incumbent administration. As a leadership development expert and a leadership radar watcher, what would you want to, uh, what would you want to suggest as parties here to some of the troubling situations in the country now? Uh, thank you once again. Um, what can I say? I mean, we're all feeling it, aren't we? Uh, um, Economic-wise, security-wise, um, and we've been at it really, you know, for a great while. And um, from my um, experience, from what I've seen, and um, Nigeria is no exception, where we've had to go in and um, meet with the leadership of organisations. When you then ask them, give me the first three or the top three issues that you think you are facing as an organization. And I can bet my last bottom dollar that communication will be one of them. If not the first one, it'll be to be the second one. I say this because um, if you look at some of the challenges of the current or even the past government or past governments they've been having, it's around the ability or the challenge in having to communicate what they're exactly trying to do. Uh, um, don't forget that um, a lot of the issues that we have, you know, currently, like I said, they've been there for years. And many of us, you know, when I say us, many, I mean, I mean may, yes, may, many of us may not necessarily understand the genesis of those. Now, they, of course, they say con govern government is a, a continuum. But it's important, though, that when government come in, they're able to communicate the baseline, you know, as in this is what we are inheriting as we come in. So that that way they start managing expectations because soft tough decisions have to be taken. Some tough decisions are being taken at the moment. The ability to actually communicate those tough decisions even before they are taken so that people are well aware of the potential impacts of those decisions will go a long way to help. There is a, um, 
a figure out there at the moment, for example, that by 2025, 75% of the workforce will be the millennials. This, these are people between the ages of, say, 81 to 1981 to 1996. Now, if you ask these people, what was their understanding of the civil, the Nigerian civil war, for example, they probably will struggle to tell you because they weren't there. Many of them even, now, protested. It, Many of them even protested against renaming University of Lagos Moshuda because they, were, they, they couldn't connect. And this, this, is, this, is the, this is what I'm saying. So communication is important. You see, we must get better at doing that at all levels. Uh, Kola, so, what then specifically would you suggest as the methodologies or the strategies of communication that you think will work in an environment like Nigeria with the peculiarities we have, you know, largely uneducated citizenry, um, unlike in the UK where you function, uh, a, a polity that is divisive uh, on, his, on his own because of primordial sentiments that are ingrained. What would be the communication strategies and methodologies that okay. we're going to provide? Uh, okay, interestingly, you said even unlike the UK. You see, even within the UK, there are, you know, segments of, or sections of, of, the, of people, the populace, that actually would not necessarily find it convenient to, you know, to actually read or have access or access the, 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 the information that you have there. So you need to make uh, um, additional provisions for them. And they're actually required by law that you do do that. For example, not everybody will read English. Not everybody understands English. You know, not everybody will speak it. So you are required to make provision for those people. You see, but in our case, okay, we speak pidgin English, but even within that, there are people that will struggle to understand that. So certainly, we must start looking at how to access or how these people will need to access information. Now, in the days, you know, in the days when we're growing up, um, the I'm not sure whether it was still it was um, the was it the Ministry for um, Orientation. There were certain poems and um, citations that, that we read. We didn't realize that they were actually molding us. They were actually imbibing certain values inside us then. We thought we were just singing or we were just, you know, singing rhymes. But if, in actually, they, they influenced us. You know, in the some of them were in uh, local TV, languages. TV. Like, and... You know, they actually. You know, so immediately think, hang on, if I don't go to school, my butter will not do coke, coke, coke. Basically, you won't be able to afford good shoes. You won't be able to, to put on cut <laughs> shoes. Uh... Cut shoes, yeah, cut shoes. <laughs> so, 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 so we need to start looking at such things again. You know, again, you see, some of this stuff is not necessarily doing extraordinary things, I always say. Whether to you know, but like, Kola, like Kola, how would you recon, how would you reconcile some of these uh, some of these suggestions you're making with the reality of our circumstances now? When we're growing up, there were monolithic behemoths of communication organs. You know, the TV stations were just about four, but now you have the plethora of channels on the internet, and just there is an information information stampede of a sort. How would you... Uh, absolutely. Again, again, it speaks to the leadership topic that we're trying to, to look at, isn't it? Yes. Now, 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 if, if, if we're really serious about developing future leaders or strengthening you know, our leadership development or recruitment, then really we should be looking at what are the needs, what are our current needs, what are our future needs, that should inform the, the, the leadership strategies or leadership recruitment strategies that we embark on. For example, like I, was, like I said earlier, if 75% of the workforce by 2025 will be millennials, now these guys have their own peculiarities. They're on the internet all the time. Now the type of leaders that we have, they're gonna bring up policies 
you know, that are going to make decisions, shouldn't they be internet savvy as well? Uh, uh, Carla, Carla, let me get a bit, uh, let me get a bit naughty with you at this juncture and take okay. you directly to the newly constituted federal cabinet. What okay. would be your take on, <laughs> and I know you're always very circumspect on issues of politics, but we can't but visit that station at this juncture. Uh, what would be your opinion of the, the panoramic short of it, and speaking also uh, beyond the panoramic short of it to specific individuals and the responsibilities allo allotted them? I think um, the current administration, they've um, had a stab, you know, at fulfilling some of their promises, i.e., you know, inclusion of um, the younger generation, the youth in, in the government, women. Um, um, because I don't really know uh, um, the, uh, put it this way, all over the world, all over the world, the, the, the Gen X, i.e. Yeah, those between 1965 and 1981, hold most of the leadership positions all over the world. All over the world. All of the elite leadership positions are held by these groups, 1965 to 1981. Now, so if we take that and we put that against, you know, the, the current crop of, should I say, ministers and special advisors, how have we fared? That is one. Because I don't really know, you know, close, you know, nitty gritty of some of the skill sets of uh, many of, the, of, of those in the cabinet. It's difficult for me to say, but certainly I can see clearly efforts of the government to actually start addressing that gap. Because hang on, if most of your population, they're of this particular age bracket, and they have the particular peculiarities, then it goes to reason that really, the closest age group to that lot should actually feature, or even some, many of them should feature in your leadership positions. Because they will have the best opportunity to communicate, speak their language, speak you know, into, keep a pace. Speak into inclusivity, yeah. engagement. Absolutely. It's keep just a that as an yeah. E for she uh, campaigner, I must be very honest with you, Kola, yeah. I'm a bit disappointed with the percentage of the women folk in the cabinet. Uh, it's relatively better than the immediate past administrations, but mm -hmm. uh, not quite. For me, it doesn't seem to match what uh, Dr. Goodluckability Jonathan's administration had uh, in percentile terms. But having said that, inclusivity is, uh, is quite desirable in the way this cabinet has been constituted. Uh, specifically now to ministerial roles and responsibilities in the backdrop of the fact that Nigerians are feeling scorched economically, feeling scorched uh, in many respects. What would be your take? Uh, I'm also to reconcile it with the issue of communication with which you used to add your analysis. Okay, I'll tell you this. You see, when, we, when you have challenges like this, you know, I mean, again, it's not peculiar to Nigeria as an entity. It's not, you know, organizations, large, small, have the same thing. We need to revisit exactly what our visions are, or what our vision is. What exactly is our vision as a country? You are making me laugh in, you are making me laugh in vernacular. We, we, How would we I... need, we need, well, this is what I'm saying, you see, and I'm, I'm coming to the, to, to, to the appointment of the, you know, of the, of the ministers. That that vision, and I know that the current administration, uh, they've got um, a document in a manifesto where they tried to articulate that. But again, if you were to ask even the civil servants, what is the vision for Nigeria? Say, our vision, say, by you know, another 30 years, can they tell you? And these are guys, these are civil servants that are supposed to make it happen, help you make it happen. Can they actually say? what the vision is. 
Now, so we need to sell the vision first and let us be, let us all be familiar, or at least most of us be familiar with the vision. But, but, it is that I will then inform everything else that we do, including but, 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 Paula, the... Yeah. Paula, unlike, unlike in most private organizations, um, uh, in, in a polity such as Nigeria's, even in the UK, I was actually talking to somebody this afternoon and I was telling them that when I was a young man growing up and functioning in the UK, and even as a politician in the UK, I never could have ever thought that in five years, the United Kingdom would have traded five prime ministers. And, <laughs> and to be speaking to the fact that in Nigeria, multi-ethnic, uh, primordial sentiments, as long as the tail of the crocodile, uh, you, I would, I, I don't, look, we've had vi Vision 2020, Vision 20, Vision 2020 plus, Vision. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me speak to that as well. Again, you know, uh, it's not about just having it written. It's not about not uh, and there's something I'm gonna say at this station. Uh, I've said it privately to friends and colleagues, uh, but I think I'm gonna say it here, and I hope people that need to hear they need to hear. It's not just about saying it; it's about ensuring there is that connectivity at all levels. Let me give you this example. If we could have a scheme where the government at the centre says this is our vision, these are our objectives, yeah? And the regional, you know, i.e. the states, then design their own vision and objectives around that, you know, because really the, the, the centre is not on its own, isn't it? it, it the, the, the people that are actually in the states, isn't it? So and the states, they design their objectives and show how they're contributing to help achieve that those national objectives. Now, note that they would not necessarily be able to contribute to every single one. So, for example, Lagos State may be able to contribute to about maybe three or four, say of about six of the objectives. If Lagos State are able to do that, and but, Kano but, State but are this, able to pick three or four but, of those, but Kola, now, what Kola, will happen? Kola, this is a federation. It, it, and in a yes. by the very organic definition and nature of federations, Kola, they can't sing to the same hymn book. Yeah, mean, this is what I'm trying to say. This is what I'm saying. With the right leadership, again, this is a federation, but we want to all, we, we all climb, we all clamping, uh, we all, we, we all um, desiring a better Nigeria, isn't it? So if we can all collectively, as in, the federating units collectively agree that this is our vision. That's the first task. Now, we can then say, okay, individually, as a unit, these are the bits that we can contribute to, and we concentrate on those. Now, the center can then incentivize, which is what they do here, can then incentivize you as you contribute to helping them achieve in those missions. That does not affect your allocations and what have you, but there are ways you can still incentivize units uh, uh, um, when they help you to achieve. Because really, when the country as a whole is better, for example, if the Naira, if the Naira is okay, stronger, and I'm not necessarily the one pushing for a stronger, excessively stronger Naira, because I don't think the issue is about the strength of the Naira, but about taking advantage of whatever the value Naira is. If Naira is not, is really, if too strong, people will not buy from us. So it's about increasing productivity rather than, you know, strength of the Naira, strength, strength of the Naira. So, so but I'm just using that as an example. If we have better, uh, a more stable Naira, let me put it that way, then everybody in the country will win. So how do we achieve that? If productivity, across the country increases, then it's better for all of us. Now, we play to our strength, each unit. If I'm good at providing certain services or products, then I concentrate on those. 
uh, and you concentrate on yours. Now, uh, let me, let what me, is the let, 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 me, let, me, let me be a bit cynical at this juncture. Yes. Uh, yes. Be cynical because, okay, it's wonderful to speak to increase in productivity. But an average mm. cynic, an average skeptic will be telling you what has been the investment of the Nigerian state in the Nigerian, in the Nigerian uh, citizen. And you know what? Garbage in, garbage out. When you have not, when you have not given quality education to your citizen, when you have not provided social welfare infrastructure that will unhold the the citizen to self fulfilment, how can productivity? That is ironically why uh, an average South African produces what three Nigerians produce. If you look at the GDP of Nigeria and South Africa's and you look at the population of Nigeria and South Africa, yes. you discover that mm. an average South African citizen produces what three Nigerians mm. produce. Mm. 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 Again, I'm going to try and relate it to the real subject matter of it, which is the leadership, you know, that, 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 was, that we were, were talking about. Now, now, increasing productivity, again, with the right leadership. And again, how, how do I bring this in? Because I don't want us to lose the focus of the actual issue here that we're trying to address the leadership uh, recruitment. Leadership is at all levels, not just necessarily, you know, the federal government or you're not even the state government. You know, you have the local government. You I, have actually, I actually often, I often tell my friends that leadership <laughs> is the cumulative efforts of those of us who control things in the private sector. We are the leaders of the society. Go ahead. I quite agree with okay. you on that. Okay. So, 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 so that we can relate whatever we're saying to that. So in, in, in our various locali localities, i.e. the units level, the what level, the state level, private sector, public sector, there are leaders there. So the challenge is how we identify these leaders. The challenge is how we support and grow these leaders. The challenge is how we um, um, ensure that these leaders are fairly rewarded and not penalized. And all these mechanisms, yes. color, all these mechanisms, yes. are they to be, to be uh, in the formal leadership, uh, leadership processing system, or they just have to be across the, across the value chain, formal, informal, uh, uh, bureaucratic, uh, uh, bureaucratic, religious, uh, moral, social. Uh, absolutely. Now, let me tell you, I mean, you, 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 I'm sure you know this, that number one um, skill set now and for the future, at least for, as far as we know now, is um, leaders having a uh, uh, skill set, you know, emotional intelligence skill set. You want to be particularly. Uh, 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 you particularly, want to be a bit. You want to be a bit helpful to define emotional intelligence for some of our viewers who may not quite. Yes, yes. It basically, is understanding your own. Uh, 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 um, should I say peculiarities, emotions, limitations, beliefs, values, uh, uh, um, um, tolerance, so to speak, as well as those of others. Hearing what they're not necessarily saying, you see, not necessarily saying, knowing as much as possible about yourself as well as others. There's something also called Juhari, uh, Juhari window, which is basically, you know, it's, it's like a square and, and, and they're in four segments. One is about what you know about yourself and others know about you. And the other is the second one is what you know about yourself and others don't know about you. Then there's another one, what others know about you that you don't know about yourself. Then the fourth one is what you don't know about you and others don't even know about you. Again, the idea is that you want to minimize as much as possible the unknown. And it's a, it's a skill set that you need to have as a, 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 as a leader. 
You, you, so you, if you you're have reminding that, me, you, you're you're reminding me of a former American Defense Secretary who was uh, who was quoted as saying the known knowns and the known unknowns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so 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 now, if you can do that, if you can minimize the unknowns, you find it easier to influence and carry people along. It's important. You know, you find it easier to, so because now there's a lot of, I mean, like, you know, there is, um, you know, the, uh, the artificial intelligence coming in into everything that we do at the moment. Like, uh, there's a lot of automation. So you are, you're using less and less bodies to deliver stuff. But you need to even be able to carry people along to even embrace that, you know, as a way of even increasing productivity, improving quality outcome, uh, 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 um, as a way of um, um, let people see how else they can add value to, to what we are trying to do. In so yes, yeah, it's going to be formal. It's going to be informal. Uh, 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 you have touched on you have touched on a very very interesting uh, subject. The mm -hmm. the wave of AI as it is sweeping into. A human existence, you know, be it at the workplace, be it in our social uh, dispositions. And ironically, the generational gulf between the technology natives, the, the youngsters below the age of 35, 35 and below, and the technology immigrants, like those of us, you know, many in our age bracket, you know, 40 and above, and yet, the inevitability of the dominance of artificial intelligence is here to stay. You are, you are word processing, you want to send a message to your friend, and, you want, and the whole, the app has, takes it over from you. You may want to type a particular word, the, the app presumes, the AI app presumes, that you, and you know, wrong messages sometimes have been sent. So, and this too, further complicates the issues of leadership. Uh, yes, exactly. And that's the point I was trying to make. Now, knowing fully well, that is here now, and it's only going to be even become more prominent. Now, how are we sourcing our leaders hmm. to take advantage of those? Why many, we... many of them, ironically, are even alienated from uh, you know, comfortably... <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly. How are we sourcing our leaders? Do we have, at all levels, again, are we preaching succession planning at all levels? Are we preaching that? If we're preaching that, what structures, what arrangements do we have in place, again, at all levels to make that happen? You know, what support systems do we have in place? What, um, what mentoring, coaching arrangements do we have at all levels? What, um, you, you know, um, what, uh, you, you know, I talked about, you know, giving, uh, rewarding fairly as well. I can't overemphasize that. I think it's very, very, very important. Kola. Fair we, reward is important. But again. Kola, we need to be costing yeah. home now. Our time is not quite the friend of a program like this. Interesting as you sound. Uh, how would you want to wrap it up? Uh, in the in the fact you know given the fact that many Nigerians are presently feeling at pressed and feeling like uh, the government especially the federal government in the backdrop of the subsidies gone uh, phrase, uh, phrase pronounced by the president at his inaugural uh, feeling like they, they the government is trying to wring blood out of the out of the store. <laughs> the stone that the thing they are now. How would you want to wrap it up? Well, perhaps, like I said um, at the beginning, um, I will encourage those at the hems of affairs in the private sector, public sector, at all levels, federal, state government, uh, um, MDAs, agencies, to improve in their communication uh, efforts. Yeah, Not just before policies, uh, not just after policies, before policies, during policies, and after policies, to improve on that. Understand the demographics better, understand the needs 
of the demographics better so as able to be able to respond to those needs. Well, and I also must... encourage the, uh, the Gen Zs and the millennials to take time out and actually um, uh, uh, um, understand where the country has been and where we've been, where we're coming from. Yeah. So, and also get themselves ready, acquire relevant skill sets for the future. Thank you very much, Colin. But this is where we have to leave it. Time that dictator of a program like this is telling us about time we ended. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure.